Belinda Green moved to her new kennels in Allbourne in 2020 in what was an incredibly busy time for her and her family. Now, with 66 dogs in her care, her work and her personal life continue to go from strength to strength. We're getting there now. It's taken, obviously, a fair while. You're trying to get 38 acres and a space for 100 into space for 60 to 70 and obviously only a few acres. So it's, it's taking a lot of condensing and, and downsizing is never easy. Um, but we're getting there now. Everything's starting to feel a little bit more like home now. Um, not finished yet, but I'm nearly there. I want to put some more grass paddocks in and whatnot, but we've got the gallop in, we've got the hydropore, we've, we've sorted all the fencing out. Um, we're about kind of 80% where I want to be, so we're getting there, but I always like to improve and move forward. So, And these facilities, like the gallop and like the hydropore, they're important to you because the thing that strikes me when I talk to you is how ambitious you are in the sport. Yeah, 100%. I think if you can... For me, I, it's hard to wake up every morning and do the same thing and constantly stay the same. I like to get up and I like to you know, move forward, I like to progress and if there's something I feel I can do, whether it's on my kennels or the way we do things or more staff or, or whatever, whatever it may be, I'm going to do it because I want to improve and you know, I want to be the best I can be, whatever that may entail. In amongst all this, you just kind of got on with it and, and had a baby, didn't you? So, you know, we've got that in the mix as well. I, we had a, f a fair few busy years, to be fair. Like I say, we, we moved here, we moved to Hove, we built a house and I had a baby. And I, I tell you, going, and just a bit of COVID there to make it that little bit easier. Um, yeah, it's, it's been great fun, but I, I think in the, the best way I can kind of put it is it's, it's made me stronger, it's made me and Gary stronger and the team stronger. So it's, in the nicest way, we can get through all that. Daily stuff is easy. So fingers crossed, hopefully we're, we're through an eventful couple of years and we can start cracking on now and, and have a lot of fun. And your little girl, I've been down here before and seen her down here. She, she's not here today, but she loves being around the dogs and literally growing up at these kennels. Yeah, she has. And she, she probably likes being around the dogs just a little bit too much. She, she's got to that um, age now where obviously she can reach everything and she thinks it's great fun to just walk down the range and open all the doors up, which is utter chaos. But no, she loves it. They love her. And no, it's, it's, it's great for her to grow up in this sort of atmosphere. Despite the busyness and all the changes, uh, this year has brought your greatest success. You're now a Category 1 winner after winning the Sussex Cup. You're from a family steeped in greyhound racing. How proud were your family of you? Yeah, they, they were really, really proud, to be fair. And um, it was a shame they couldn't be able to see. I unfortunately had to look after my little one who goes to sleep earlier than um, the Sussex Cup round. But no, it was um, it was really nice. It's obviously always been a family affair. It's still a family affair. Obviously, I took over from my dad in 2018, so um, unfortunately due to poor health. But he's, he's doing pretty well now. Um, him and my mum are now the, the nursery the, most of the time looking after Harriet. But um, no, like I say, at the moment it's, it's me, Gary, obviously Pip, who's his younger brother, and, and my, my mum still helps me with accounts because maths has never been my strong point. Um, and Dad still does all the mowing and everything in the field, so it's, it's still very much family affair and always will be. You've got some really good owners as well now that are a part of the team and you, you do treat them, they're like your friends as well, aren't they? Yeah, 100%. We, you have to have, when you're dealing with especially open races because you've got to put them in the right sort of direction as well but you have to have a working relationship that works um so you know you have to you have these you know you're going to have long phone calls at early hours in the morning or late at night or whatever and unfortunately that's part and parcel because you have to have that relationship that works so that you're always on the same page so that if something does go wrong or whatever it was both your idea and it's not oh it was your idea it was your idea whatever but you have to i think it works best i think you get the most out of your dogs and obviously it's meant to be an enjoyable experience for everyone, so you have to get on. Um, if you don't get on, there's no point. You may as well split and try something different. So I'd like to think that, especially the bigger owners, but most of our owners, we, we all get on really well. We all have a good laugh. Um, obviously, banter is key. <laughs> it makes the day go a lot easier. But no, we always go out and beyond to, um, to make sure our owners are happy. It's a refreshing way of thinking about it, and it does sound like you, you put a lot of thought into it and how you want things to be at your kennel. Yeah, 100%. I want, you know... <laughs> The biggest thing is I want a lot of this is people's hobby so they've got to enjoy it and it's got to feel like a hobby and not oh this isn't going right and that's not going right because unfortunately things can't go right all night all the time that's that's life um, but if you get on with everyone and it's a good experience 90% of the time that 10% doesn't feel so bad um, but like I say I'm in the nicest way I don't want to be out here you know 24 7 to then report back to someone that I don't get on with either um, so it has to be it has to work both ways. We're in a kennel full of dogs here. There's not a, a peep to be heard. All your dogs, as we've seen today, look so, so well. What brings success to Belinda? What's important in training greyhounds? 
I think, you know, I think a lot of it is common sense, to be fair. You've got to feed well, you've got to exercise, and all those things are common sense. But I'm a big believer in if you do all the little things, all the big things fall into place naturally. So if you do all those little things, then you don't really have to worry about doing anything major. But the biggest thing for me is that my dogs are happy. Um, if they're happy, they always run well for you. And you actually turn them a little bit nuts as well. Apparently, yes. We, yeah, it does seem... But I like my dogs to be able to express themselves and be dogs, you know. Um, that way, you know, if you spend the amount of time with them that, that we do on a daily basis, then you know when they're right and when they're wrong. Um, it sounds silly, you know, people go, oh, dogs don't talk to you, but if you listen and you pay enough attention, they'll tell you everything you need to know. So, ambitious girl, you've won the Sussex Cup. What's the next ambition? You know, to, same as I always say, we just want to be, you know, do the best we can all the time. If we've got a dog that's good enough to go in something, then we're going to give it 110%, and then, you know, you need to hope Lady Luck's on your side. But as long as our dogs are always happy, they're running well, then, you know, we're, we're generally happy, but nothing's off the table.